welcome to the Tipsy Nits podcast with Sia and Pip. Hello. This episode we're going to do a little bit about our travelling that we've been up to recently and our choice of drinks does reflect that. Yep, so as we said last podcast, both of us have been off on even more travels. Yes. And kind of following the mini tradition we set in the previous episode, this time Pip has brought something back from her various exploits elsewhere. Yes, I bought some very tasty Bushmills whiskey. Mm -hmm. So this is quite famous. This is, I bought like a little tasting box, really. Um, and it's super cute. You can see it on Instagram. It's adorable. It's got three little 50 ml bottles of whiskey, two of just the standard Bushmills and one of the Bushmills Black Bush. Mm -hmm. And it's basically this old distillery. You can do a tour of it. It's amazing. And the box that the whiskey comes in looks like the distillery. It's cute. So where's the distillery fit? So the distillery is in Bushmills mm -hmm. on the north coast of Northern Ireland. And on the back of the box, it says, In 1608, King James I granted a royal licence to distil, distil whisky in the area known as Bushmills. The unique whisky-making tradition lives on in Ireland's oldest working distillery of over 400 years, producing smooth-tasting Irish whisky. We've also bought a bottle for my father-in-law's birthday, because oh, they nice. like whisky, so we thought we'd bring a bottle back. So that's sitting ready to go to him and I'm sad because I can't drink it myself <laughs> <laughs> just means you have to go back yeah well it was a very good day when the day we went to go and, and uh, get it so I'll talk a little bit more about that later yep but it's been a long time since I've had any Bushmills so you're gonna get a very fresh kind of idea because I think the last time I tried it I wasn't actually much of a drinker at all so yeah and when I tried it a very long time ago. I actually had a bug at the time, so I was not very well afterwards. No. no. So, shall we have a try? Yep. This is going to okay. be the Bushmills standard Bushmills. But it smells nice. It smells really nice. Okay. Hmm. That's quite sharp. Do you think I think mm. I felt it in my sinuses. Yeah, it's got it's got smoke. Mm. But it's not one of those ones where you feel like you're breathing dragon smoke afterwards yeah. where you're like Ugh. and it's quite warming and nice yeah. I think it's quite nice, I think it's really smooth yeah that's not bad it, I don't think it's got like loads of flavour Yeah, but it's got quite a nice it's flavor. very subtle yeah it's, um, it's nice, I like yeah. it mm. not bad should we try the black bush yeah, now, which is from my understanding the uh, more flavoursome of the two okay Open the bottle. <laughs> These little bottles are one of those ones where, so the, cute. where it comes down the rim yeah. of the You opening. end up with it in your lap as well. Yeah. Very classic. I mean, it's noon somewhere, guys. Yeah. We're not you? recording this super early in the morning. No way! But the earlier it gets recorded, the faster I can get it edited and up. So, you know. Right. Blackbush. That smells a lot sweeter to me. Mm. That's got a lot more of a aroma, yeah. I guess. I feel a bit uh, pretentious because I don't actually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, I have no flipping clue. <laughs> oh, I really like the smell Should of that. Try it. Let's try it. Mm. That's definitely got more flavour to it. Yeah. Again, it goes into your sinuses, but I think whiskey mm. does that anyway. Yeah. That one feels a little bit burnier. <laughs> Technical term there, guys. It's Bernie. <laughs> I'm not sure what flavours I'm getting from that. I know I'm getting something. Mm. Again, it's still very smooth. Oh, God, yeah, that is really smooth. And I could definitely see that's a very easily drinkable whiskey. Mm. Oh, and by the way, guys, because it's Irish whiskey, it's whiskey, whiskey with an E. Mm -hmm. Just in case anyone wants to get up on us about the spelling, uh -huh. it's whiskey with an E. <laughs> I really like both of those. That's nice. I could definitely see just a dram of that in the evening mm. easily. Because sometimes you get whiskies and you're just like, oh, I, can't, I don't think yeah. I can actually drink that. But that is definitely drinkable. Mm. And it tastes good. I could see you drinking that one on a winter. Yeah. Like winter's evening. It would be good for like cold days. Yeah. In, around in December, kind of. Yeah. Mm. It's good though. 
Yeah, I like that. That's good. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Push mills represent. <laughs> everyone always enjoy. thinks. Everyone always thinks of Jameson's when they think of Irish whiskey, but Bush Mills has been around longer. See, I actually don't. I think Bush Mills, but that's because you know Northern Irish people. Yeah. So <laughs> one of our friends, Leia, um, who probably isn't listening, but if she is, hi Leia, is a massive, massive Bush Mills um, advocate. Yeah, like it's stronger than fan for Leia. Yeah. So Bush Mills has been very much sort of like on my frame of reference since I was about 18. Yeah. So if you say to me like Irish whiskey, I'm like, ah, Bush Mills. We used to go to Bush Mills all the time when mm. I was little because every every Easter we would go to the Giant's Causeway uh, for yeah. Easter dinner and Bush Mills is like literally round the corner. Well, that's handy. Literally round the corner. Having that on your doorstep must be fatal though. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the town of Bush Mills itself, some of it's quite pretty, but yeah. I mean, it's just a regular little town. And it's on the tourist route. Like, it is on the yeah. North Coast Road. So they get quite a lot of... The, I mean, the, yeah. the car park for the distillery is huge. But it's just... It's really good. Yeah. I, I like it. I like it a lot. And yeah. it just brings back memories being there. Oh, that's nice. And I'll talk a little bit more about what I got up to on the North Coast Road later on. Yep. But we now have on and off the needles. Yep. So, Pip, what have you got on the needles? I have another pair of toe-up, two-at-a-time sock weight socks. Are you a convert by any chance? <laughs> Maybe. Well, my last project, I needed something relaxing and chilled out. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have to think too much about it um, because there's been some stuff going on at the moment uh-huh. and I just needed something to just really yeah. chill out about. And I cast on a hat. Mm-hmm. And I just was not feeling the hat. And the whole time I was knitting the hat, I was like, I want to be knitting socks. So that's when I was like... I may have the sock bug. <laughs> one of us. One of us. <laughs> and you know what? I'm not going to be too sad. I've got some really pretty mm-hmm. 50 style like A-line dresses. Indeed you do. And I want to get a pair of Mary Janes because then I can wear my hand knit socks and show them off with my Mary Janes and my dresses. But the, co- the yarn that I'm using is Rusty Ferret Doll in the Nurple colourway. And Which I is had- the best name. Yeah. I had just enough left over from a previous project to make a pair of socks, so I was like, here we go. Make myself a pair of socks. And yeah. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm past the toe. I'm about an inch past the toe. And it's just really chilled out, knitting in the round. I'm a very big fan of vanilla socks. Mm-hmm. Just knit, 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 do a heel, knit, 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 knit some more. And I use a fish lips kiss heel, so I don't have That's to worry fair. about gussets mm. or any of that stuff. Just knit, 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 and knit some more. Fair. What have you got on the needles? Okay, so right now, as we record, I'm currently knitting a pair of kipper socks yes. from the first issue of Pom Pom Quarterly magazine. So they did a fifth anniversary reissue, and I got it because why not? And I knit one pair of the socks, which I'll talk about in a bit but the pattern is super simple but it's got a little bit of detailing across the toe and around the cuff and yeah it's just a nice pattern and I'm using it to stash bust as well so I'm using some easy knits of some kind <laughs> it's like merino nut na- I don't know if it's deeply wicked or not actually it might be I have a feeling it might be one of the other bases hmm. but I got it in Edinburgh Yarn Festival two years ago and it's currently knitting up like a dream. It's very pretty. So it's very pretty and variegated. Uh, the pattern's by Lydia Gluck and Megan Fernandez, mm-hmm. um, the editors at Pom Pom, and yeah, I'm a big fan of it. And yeah, unlike Pip, I'm actually, f- I'm pro I'm pro socks with gussets, mm-hmm. but that's mostly because I think gusset is a marvellous, marvellous word. <laughs> but yeah, gusset, it's a really good word. Yeah. That and plank. Word. Plank. Yeah. Mm, plank is a good word too. Okay. I don't like moist. No. That's an F word. I like, I like words that have like a definite kind of like, you know, t or k. Oh, like, yeah. At the end. I want to say that's like verging to that plosive sounds. Yeah. I can't remember. I did English language like for a year at university because it was a requirement to get my English lit degree and I went to some lectures. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember chatting about plosive sounds, but that's about it. See, it's funny though because in the Northern uh, Irish accent, yeah. a lot of those sounds don't come through. So, if any of you's noticed that my accent goes yeah. mental this episode, when I was at home, it went crazy. 
because anytime I'm in Northern Ireland, it just goes yeah so broad. But also often when I'm talking about Northern Ireland, yeah, it goes really broad. And the thing about Northern Ireland is a lot of our tis and stuff like that come out softer or just don't come out at all. Yeah. So like better. Yeah. So it'd be better. But for us, it comes out like better. You're talking to someone from Yorkshire. We have a very special relationship with the letter T <laughs> and the letter H. And I love the Yorkshire accent. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I had a lovely guy from Yorkshire on the phone oh. yesterday at work, and I just, I just loved his accent. It was so cute. But yeah, depending on which part of Yorkshire you're in, like we'll add, we'll add T's to words if we can. Yeah. Some like sometimes we'll just miss them out and whack them somewhere else in a sentence because why the hell not? Yeah. <laughs> I have very fond memories growing up of my mother trying to get me to like you know speak properly. <laughs> mm. See, it was only really till I, it wasn't till I was a teenager that I really got the Northern Irish accent yeah. going because my parents were both English. But then when I went to high school, uh, basically yeah. that's when the R yeah. and tar and par char for an R, how now brown cow, all really <laughs> started to come out. And it's funny because people from people not from Northern Ireland struggle so hard with that sound. Yeah. Like, our vowels are not like vowels from other places. <laughs> we have special vowels yeah. that are very, very round and mm. kind of indistinct. When you, eh, Like, if you're putting an O and a W or an O and a U together, oh, yeah. you get a very distinct sound. Yeah. So it's quite funny. If any of you's watched the vlog that I put up about my travels, you'll see what I mean yeah. about my accent because it goes so broad but yeah that was a little bit of a random tangent <laughs> a random tangent i suppose it's the joy of doing an audio podcast you yeah. guys don't necessarily know what we look like but you know what we sound like yeah what else have you got on your needles there oh what else oh yeah brief tangent now so i've been a bit of a project tart again and <laughs> um i've still got rose gold on the needles which is the brioche shawl by andrea maori it's getting big though it's not it really isn't like it's deceptively stretchy and deceptively okay. easy to photograph like i've probably only got about 60 stitches on the needles really so, yeah wow it just looks like it's more because it's brioche yeah but i've done one color change on that so that's at least exciting and then i cast on the wonder woman shawl by carissa browning yeah so if you guys haven't seen this shawl where the heck have you been it is the shawl of my dreams when i'm not dreaming of other shawls because I'm a shawl tart, but it's geeky and it's amazing and it's genius. Yeah, and it's free. Yeah, and it's free. Like, crucial thing, it is free and I'm about a quarter of the way through it so far and it's short rows, it's garter stitch, it's not even using Intarsha, which is a godsend because I can't stand Intarsha. I know I did an Intarsha shawl last episode, but once every couple of years is enough for me with Intarsha. Yeah. So I'm knitting it in some very, very, very long stashed old maiden aunt merino silk mm -hmm. and i got them years ago at a glasgow school of yarn event and they're in the last uh, last night's red dress mm -hmm. and cinnamon colorways and i think the cinnamon one's been discontinued but basically it's sort of like a nice deep plummy pinky color and then cinnamon colored so it's kind of like it's almost like a rose gold color actually mm -hmm. and yeah i'm enjoying it it's on the top of, it's on top of my queue there the one thing i would say is like it's worked from the bottom up and you do cast on a lot of stitches and i think you're going to end up with like treble that by the end of time you're done mm -hmm. so i'm finding the rows do take quite a wee while to get through mm -hmm. but i'm also a very impatient person and i'm knitting socks at the moment which take me about two seconds to finish so also like just i am all up about wonder woman at the moment like, yes see so yeah well no i'm not a big dc person at all not fussed i'm the very i'm very much the marvel girl yeah. in our group and almost everyone else is into dc but i went to see the wonder woman movie and like actually had tears of just yes mm -hmm. like it was amazing and it was so good just watching a movie where it was an awesome woman kicking ass who wasn't sexualized crazily you yeah. know it was actually quite funny because they turned a the trope on their head because at points where chris pine is the one that's awkwardly naked yes you know God. and things like that and you're sitting there going this is the movie that i have wanted 
since I was a little girl. Yep. You know? I'm not saying movies haven't existed because we had Xena, you know, blah, blah, blah. We had Ripley from Alien, but I wasn't allowed to watch that till I was 16. But, but even then, that's all still been shot through a male gaze. Yeah. Like, like you know? And I was just, I was just like, this is amazing. Yeah. I love this. Wonder Woman was awesome. Yes, Wonder Woman was awesome. And everybody needs one of these wraps in their wardrobe, I think. Yes. Like, I looked at it and I was kind of of the opinion that it will be my conference staple. Mm-hmm. I might even wear it to graduation, assuming I get this bloody PhD thesis done. (laughs) (laughs) Of choice of being part-time. But, yeah, I think it is a wardrobe staple for everyone. It's guard stitch, it's short rows, it's colour work, it's free. It looks amazing. Go forth and knit, my guys. Go forth and knit. And even if you didn't do it in the red and the the gold, it would look really well in other colours as, like, a bit of subtle geekery. Yeah. If you're in a place that maybe necessarily you don't want to show your... You don't want to fly your geek flag as, as as strongly as you would in other company. Yeah. You can still wear this. It'd be quite subtle. It looks quite professional, mm-hmm. you know? Like, I've seen... Old lines. I've seen a couple of blue and yellow ones. I've seen some blue and grey ones. Yeah. So a little bit of subtlety. It's yeah. just It just looks like a really nice kind of bold pattern. Yeah. You know, straight lines and diagonals. And that's all quite in at the moment, yeah. from what I understand. I'm not a big fashion follower, but you know, statement colour blocks. Oh, you can't go wrong with some statement colour. So I think it would work really well yeah. for kind of the subtle the subtle side of things as well, if you wanted yes. to do it that way. You got anything else on your needles or is that Um, it? I think that's it. I actually picked up my um, slightly hibernating Chester Basin mitts this morning before mm-hmm. I came over and because I'd left them so long and I'm a genius, I couldn't remember exactly what row I'd finished on. Right. And I couldn't remember where I actually started the thumb increases on the first one, so... Oh dear. Past me is in the naughty spot at the moment. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure past me also probably said something along the lines of, oh, this will be a problem for future me to deal with. (laughs) Well, current me, who is the future me, is not very pleased. No. (laughs) Oh, that's quite funny. So yeah... (laughs) Yeah, that's my other, like, slight tangent. Past seer is a dick. <laughs> See, this is why I print out my patterns and write and highlight all over them. Ugh. I'm one of those people that does that. I know there are people out there that don't. Hi. But I do. My middle name should be Hubris. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We've only had, like, a tiny wee sip of that whiskey, guys, I swear. That's not even gone to my head. You know what yeah. I'm like. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just this kind of person in general. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'd love to blame this on the alcohol, but we really, really can't. Nope. Um, We're just that kind of people. Yeah. So, trying to get us back on track <laughs> after taking Sorry, us... Sorry, guys. I don't know why you're apologising. It was all me. Sorry, guys. So, getting us back on track. Pip, what have you cast off lately? Many things. Okay. It's been a so, few weeks. Pip the prolific. It's been a few weeks. So... What have you cast off? Right, so last episode I was actually in the middle of casting off the baby blanket. Mm -hmm. I actually finished it about 10 minutes after we stopped recording. Yep. It is all wrapped up in my locker waiting for the last day of my colleague before she goes on maternity leave. And it was really funny because last week she came up to me and was like, oh, Pip, I really need to commission you to make a blanket for my wee one because I really like your knitting and... I just think it would be really sweet if you had a if I had a blanket from you. And I was like, all right, okay. I'll see what I can do while the rest of my colleagues are absolutely tipping themselves over because they all know that I've already finished one for her. So I'm quite looking forward to her reaction when I give it to her. I also cast off my Danzig. Uh, this yeah. was... So I have a box. I have a big box full of mm-hmm. project bags. You do. That are full of yarn and patterns ready to go. And I was just basically like, I don't know what I want to cast on. So I was digging through my box full of essentially ready to go. My yep. bagged up queue. And I was like, mm, I've been looking at Danzig for ages and ages. And mm, is it going to be hard? It looks like it might be hard. Mm. No, I'll just cast it on. So I cast it on. It's not hard at all. It is, in fact, super easy. It's- you fair flew through that as well. Well, I cast it on just before I went on holiday and I didn't bring it with me to Budapest, but I did take it with me to Northern Ireland. Yeah. 
And I had a lot of time off during that time. I think I had like two over two weeks off with two days at work in the middle. Oh, glorious. So I had two days at work in the middle. But I was doing, I was basically just doing a lot of knitting. And I've been watching a lot of Critical Role, which for anyone who doesn't know, there's a group of voice actors that stream their D&D game. Mm-hmm. And all the, there's like 105 or 106 episodes that are about three to four hours long. They're all on YouTube. So I pretty much just sat and watched a lot of Critical Role and did a lot of knitting. Um, Good call. And I used Dye Ninja Merino High Twist that I got at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And I used some... In fact, this is where I got the leftovers for my socks. So I used the Rusty Ferret Nurple on the doll base. And I got that Indie Bar Yarn Crawl 2016. And uh, yeah, it works really well because it's all short. Like There's little bits of short rows that show mm-hmm. off your colour. and I just need to block it now. But I've wo- I actually sat and I wove in all the ends of it already. And I hate weaving in ends. That's what it got to. That's impressive. I also cast off a sock head hat, which is by Kelly McClure. And I knit that in Strathern fleece and fibre yarn that I got on my honeymoon nearly two years ago now. Mm. What? Vintage. And basically, on the way to Budapest, as I, I'm going to need a travel project, it's a really good thing that I decided to bring a travel project. Yeah. Because we had delays. Oh, delays. That's hell. As in, we got on the plane, and then we were told we wouldn't be leaving the tarmac for over an hour. Oh, that is harsh. So we were sat on the plane with no air conditioning on a hot day, and I was like, uh, No. So I cast on my hat and then I didn't really do, and then waiting at the other end at the airport for everyone else because all of the flights across Europe got delayed that day because there's a massive thunderstorm over Germany that Uh. all the planes had to divert around because they couldn't go through it because it was so crazy. So we waited for hours on the other side for everyone to turn up. So it was definitely, definitely a good idea for me to have knitting. And then I didn't touch it for ages because I was like, I've got more interesting things to do now that I'm home and I've got other projects I can work on, Mm -hmm. like Danzig. But eventually I just got my act together and I finished it. And I really like it. I can wear it really slouchy or I can wear it with a rolled brim and make it non-slouchy. I tend not to be a big fan of the rolled brim though, so I'm probably going to be wearing it slouch, but the yarn is so beautiful. And it's like a purpley, pinky, bluey, variegated yarn. And the hat is very pretty and I like it a lot. I also cast off a set of the Haline patterns from A Love Like Salt by Kirsten Bedigan. Mm-hmm. So the hat and the mitts. I did make the mitts a little shorter, but because I don't like big, long mitts, but... And you um, finish these super quickly as well. Like, no sooner do you cast them on, it's like, hi guys, casting off Instagram. Well, I mean, they're really simple. Like, it's just a slip stitch pattern. And I actually, really, it was my first time doing broken rib, and I actually really, oh, really okay. like how it, I really like broken rib, how it looks. Yeah. Um, but I used Queen of Pearls in that, and I used uh, DK, hand dyed DK, and it's like a, and that kind of iron grey yeah. and a kind of rust orange. And I think they work really well together. I'm really pleased with them. I, yeah, I'm just really mm-hmm. happy with that. You should all go get I Love Like Salt because it's really good. Yes. I then had my Big Boy Cakes from Easy Knits that I got at Edinburgh. No, I got Indie Bar Yarn Crawl last year or the year before. I can't quite remember. And I didn't know what to do with them. So I basically just cast on a hat with some, slip, with some subtle slip stitching in it. And I kind of went up the colour and down the colour. So it was, you know... It looks really funky. Blue, dark green, light green, lightest green, yellow, lightest green, light green, dark green, blue. And just repeated that um, with just some really kind of simple slip stitches in it. So it makes a really subtly textured hat. It's also... The yarn is really soft. It's like 70% X more horn. 20% alpaca and 10% nylon, I think. Oh, that's an interesting it's mix. It's really soft. I love it. I really love it. And then the latest thing I've cast off is my Wonder Wonder hat by Megan Williams. And... It looks really jazzy. 
yeah, it looks really good. I used Isle Yarns. I'd seen them on Country File, and I was like, who are these people? I need to find out their yarn. So I bought some, and the yarn's nice, and the pattern's nice, but I just think I wasn't really feeling colour work. Yeah. So, but I finished it, and it's a nice slouchy hat, and I mean, the pattern pops. It it's does. It's like, boom. Um, I think once I uh, block it, it'll be a lot softer because it is, you know, one of them is 100% Dorset and the other yeah. one is like a mix of Dorset and BFL and something else that I can't quite yeah. remember off the top of my head, sorry. <laughs> but the yarn's gorgeous and the colours are amazing, but I just wasn't quite feeling the hat. But um, now happens. it's finished, now it's finished, I really like it, so that's just, it just happens, like you said, Sia. Mm-hmm. So what have you cast off? You have cast off a fair few things yourself. I'm not as prolific as you though, missus. So I cast off the alloy brioche hat from uh, Winter 2016 Pom Pom Quarterly. It's so pretty. That is really pretty. And if you remember last episode, I was about to hit the crown decreases and I was kind of like, yeah, I think it'll probably be okay. But you know, so far the pattern's been fine, bar the odd shenanigans where I've apparently forgotten what I was doing and managed to knit a hole into it, as you do. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it turns out knitting three or five stitches together when they're brioche stitches is pretty much my idea of hell. Mm Mm-hmm. There are various inappropriate jokes you can make, but getting your needle through that many stitches is really flipping difficult. I mean, get it. No matter how loose you knit the previous row. Decreasing five together with just one stitch per stitch, if that yeah. makes sense, is hard enough. So it was, I think it was three. It was either threes or fives. I can't remember which, but either way, it was absolute hell, and it was the equivalent of having like treble the amount of stitches on your needle. Yeah. So there was a lot of cursing when mm-hmm. I was casting it off, but it's fine. I've managed to sort of like do a bit of surgery on it afterwards, involving crochet hooks and weaving in the ends and things Mm -hmm. so it looks pretty cool and i got a massive huge pom-pom on the top which also hides a multitude of decreasing sins pom-poms are good for that yes so the pattern is really good it's nice mindless brioche it's just i think i probably need to get the hang of doing huge stitch number decreases yeah so it's not put me off or anything and i would recommend the pattern for someone that's like a beginner for brioche Mm -hmm. it's just you probably need to go in prepared and be kind of like, okay, this is perhaps going to take me a little bit more time than I anticipated. Yeah. And also a bit of cursing. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I then cast on a Delita shawl, which is from another pom-pom quarterly. I've been on a bit of a kick because they've been doing their pom-fest cal at the moment. Yeah. So this was by Nadia, and I apologise if I've pronounced this wrong, Cretan this year, mm-hmm. I think. And it's basically this big lacy shawl with this really funky border it's like a double layered border mm-hmm. so it's hard to like describe it but basically it's two knitted on borders mm-hmm. so you've got like two layers of like little lacy teeth oh it's really clever the way it's done so i knit that in some hedgehog fibers skinny singles in the oracle colorway mm-hmm. and then despite me doing calculations and things it turns out i wasn't going to have enough of that to do one of the like the border i'm not sure what happened there but mm-hmm. Hey ho, so I used some long stash dining yarn mm-hmm. and it's the Tussa Silk Ooh. that I had and it worked, I'd used it for the contrast nups mm-hmm. and I did like one layer of, there's two borders and I did the smaller layer using that and I didn't bother doing the second one because I quite liked how it looked. Yeah. And then I gave that to our friend Emma. Lovely. Um, it's her new gap year shawl because she's going off on her um, probationary teaching year <laughs> soon. So I figured she needed a new gap year shawl. Yes. <laughs> Plus it'll keep her warm because she's going all the way up to the top of Scotland. Yep. Where none of us have ventured before, so I see many yep. exciting road trips ahead and yes. possible cold winters. I really, um, really looking forward to having an yep. excuse to go all the way up there, to be honest. It's going to be good. I know, right? There might even be yarn up there. There probably will be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I finished that. And then afterwards, I decided to cast on a flax light sweater. So my mum pal's best friends had a baby while we were over in Canada. And I knit her a little cardigan. And I I just just don't know, I was in the mood to cast on a little baby garment. And I was kind of like, why not? And I was feeling like, you know, busting more stash. So I had 
a little remnant of my Queen of Pearls Sisters L sock mm-hmm. in the birthday rainbow colourway she did not last this year but the year before. Yeah. So I use that for the yoke, so it's got this really cute little rainbow stripy yoke. Mm-hmm. And then I use some drops baby merino and it's just like a light grey colourway. It's so cute. Um so I did it with little like short sleeves because I think because of the texture of the yarn, it's going to be more of a summery mm-hmm. little top she wears. So I did that and I cast it off and it's actually quite cute. So I'll send that along with Phil when he goes back at Christmas and he can give it to them then. Hopefully it'll fit at some point in the small child's life. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to fit baby clothes. Well, the other thing was, like, I was knitting the sort of like... The way they've sized it, I think I was in six to nine months or the nine months to like a year or so, mm-hmm. but there's a weird sort of ink, like jump in sizing. Mm-hmm. And as I was knitting it, I was looking at it and I was like, okay, so we've got friends that have got dogs and cats and I think it'd fit that cat, but not that dog. But we've not got anyone who's got any babies at the moment. Yeah. So I was looking at it and I was like, this might fit a child. I, can... I don't know what size babies are. I know. <laughs> so I was like, I can, I, can, I can fit it to a dog, maybe. Yeah. Like, it'd fit my friend's Cocker Spaniel, but it wouldn't fit our friend's Lurcher. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh. I, like, I was taking pictures of it and said it's from all and I was like, you've had children. <laughs> what do you think about this size? Yes, no? Um, it's one of those things. We don't really have that many babies in our lives at the moment. No. So It's going to be probably quite a while before we do. Yeah. And it's one of those things, like, you do measure things, but you then kind of like, but is that really, like, child size? Yeah. So yeah, that that was an interesting experience because like I knit the baby cardi before, yeah. So that came out exactly the size I expected, and then I got to see the baby, and I was like, "Yep, she'll grow into that. That's fine." Well, it was but, like when I knit my little lush, and I was like, "This yeah, looks Freda. like it's probably the right size." And then they put it on her. I was, I was terrified it was going to be too small. Yeah, they put her on her. It's too big. I was like, I have no idea what size children are. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> this is not something yeah. that I know instinctually. <laughs> yeah so oh it's funny yeah so i can knit things for adults and myself easy i understand proportions and things there but with children i'm just kind of like guesswork yeah it's like chill. as long as it's not too small they will grow into yeah, it yeah so exactly <laughs> that's the thing like at least with kids stuff it's like with school uniforms you kind of like if i get it three sizes too big it'll last them four years so yeah i finished the little flax pattern and Again, I think tin can have completely spoiled me because obviously it's a seamless pattern. Yeah. So I'm looking at other patterns and I'm like, nope, I have to seam it. Not happening. No, thank um, you. So yeah, that is one of their free patterns. It's part of their simple collection. Yeah. So I very much recommend it, guys. It's super easy to follow. Probably easier if you actually have like the person you're making it for <laughs> around to like yeah. reference it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I recommend that one. That's cool. I want to make a flat because at some point nice like they've got a whole load of nice patterns though like yeah. i quite like the snowflake jumper the mm. little snowflake yoke like i have been looking at other people's versions of that and kind of going i could knit that i've probably got the yarn for that like to be honest i'm viewing this small child as an opportunity to de-stash <laughs> <laughs> yes because i do have a lot of yarns which are actually you know suitable for going in the washing machine and things so yeah. it's not like i'm kind of going here have this hand knitted alpaca cardigan bt dubs I gotta hand wash it we are Hope quite the child doesn't run in some mud or anything yeah I think we're both quite on a big de-stash kick, so yeah. it's quite useful because you clean it up really quick so you get a good sense yeah. of achievement. So, still speaking of de-stash, I, once I finished that I cast on a pair of kipper socks, which I mentioned earlier, and I did it using some Rusty Ferret Wink in the Anticipation colourway, so it's like it's almost like a natural colour and it's got pinks and silvers and reds in it mm-hmm. and sparkles, so it's super girly. And then I added some contrast heels and cuffs mm-hmm. using some Ginger Twist Cheapish Sock in the Lallybroch colourway. And then I gave them to my old flatmate Zoe, also nice. known as Zozas, because I felt that she deserved some socks. And I knew this because Zoe was round at my place mm-hmm. last week and was like, look, see, I made me some socks and I love them and they're the best thing in the world. Yeah. So she's very happy with them. And I cheated with them a bit because I didn't have quite enough yarn to like do the pattern up to the cuff. I just did them as little ankle socks so Zoe could kind of wear them as little slippers around the flat. So I wasn't too fussy about doing like, you know, increases or decreases around like the cuff and things. But it was a good stash burst. I got to appreciate some of my yarn more. And as I said earlier, the pattern is ridiculously simple and just really nice meditative knitting. 
and I'm now knitting a pair for myself. Nice. So that's pretty much everything I've got off my needles. Nice. So yeah, we've both been busy since the last podcast. Busy, busy bees. It has been like yeah. six weeks or something though, so. Yes. You know. And since then, as we said at the start, we've both been travelling, so we thought we'd maybe tell you about our little adventures that we've been on since then. Yes. Some have involved yarn, some less so. Mm-hmm. So Pip, let's chat about where you've been. So I went to Budapest for my sister's hen party and it was amazing. Oh my goodness, if any of you ever get the chance to go to Budapest, jump at it. I mean, it is phenomenal. I didn't really know what I was expecting, but it just was amazing. Yeah, I I mean, the architecture is stunning. The city is so vibrant. If you want to spend your whole day sightseeing, you can. There's there's like about a billion hop on, hop off bus tours. Oh, I love those. And the Danube is amazing. And there's like... um, to, uh, river tours as well did you so do a river tour we didn't actually have the time because we were only there for a couple of days yeah but i mean ugh, it was amazing so on the day we got there eventually me and one of other uh, one of the other girls we were going to go to the apartment first because everyone else is going to be getting in quite late right or later i mean we got in late the others were supposed to be arriving about midnight oh they all got delayed until about 2 a.m ouch so they didn't actually arrive at the apartment till about three. So we were sitting there at the apartment from about Aww. eleven. We were like, mm, "We're hungry, but it's eleven o'clock. We'll never find anything to eat at eleven o'clock, really, around where we were." Because yeah. where we were, so it seemed really quiet. About one a.m., we were like, "We need something to eat." Uh huh. So we put on our shoes and we were basically like, "We're just gonna go out and see if we can find anything." Turned the corner from about you know ten meters down the road from where we were staying, and we were on Party Central. Handy. It was amazing. We were like, wait, what? <laughs> Tiki bars, clubs. There was a DJ playing in the street. Nice. There was like this beautiful kind of big arched bit that goes through to the next block. And that was just full of clubs. Uh, but it wasn't like violent. And it wasn't like, it was just people having a good time. It That's wasn't, good. you know how sometimes clubs and stuff like that can get a bit rowdy? Yeah. It wasn't rowdy. It was just fun. And we just Aww. kind of wandered up and we were like, what? We were not expecting this. And then we found a pizza place. Glorious. And you can buy pizza by the slice. Hmm. I had prosciutto pizza. Nice. And, oh my goodness, 1am pizza and coke. Yes. By the way, at this point, it was still like 26 degrees. So we got back to our apartment. Everyone else arrived about three and then we were like, bed. Bed time. So the next day we got up, went out for breakfast. And we, what did we do that day? So we spent basically the whole day just like wandering around the city. Mm-hmm. So we started at our apartment, which is in the middle of the Jewish quarter. And we were walking down and my mum goes, oh, pet, 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 look at this, look at this. And I was like, what is it? And she's just like, this, this place. And I was like, there were some like kind of textiles hanging out the front. Yeah. And I was like, all right. And I looked in and it was this woman in her workshop. That was also a shop. And she had these, um, she had these looms out and she was just weaving. And she has to her the whole place is just full of all her woven goods. And I was like, wow, it was so beautiful. So I picked up a woven project bag. It was gorgeous. She had some yarn, but it was yarn. It didn't really have any information and it was quite rustic. So I was like, I don't think I would use it. So I didn't pick up any yarn because I thought I was going to go to another yarn shop later on that day. But I did get a project bag and I got some pictures of the workshop, which we put on the blog. Yep. And it was amazing. I mean craft everywhere everywhere and then that little bit that had been all clubs the last time the la- the night before with the arches was like a big market and we found this guy whose mum tats Ooh. and all, it was just his stall was just full of all the stuff that she's tatted and I got pictures of that as well and I picked up some earrings and it was just stunning I mean beautiful stuff some of it had beading on it there was chokers there was necklaces there was earrings there was little like kind of like you know those things that you put on your hand where it goes around um, it goes around your wrist and then it goes up Mm. and around your finger and it was just amazing um and we chatted about that for a while and there was just so much craft everywhere and then we got to like the um there's a big square near the river and there's a big sign that says i think it's we love hungary or something like that so we all got a picture there and then we basically walked up the side of the danube and we stopped 
for lunch by the parliament building which is stunning we also saw the shoes on the danube which was pretty somber i mean it was very pretty yeah. thought-provoking it's basically a series of cast iron shoes pairs of shoes and they're all on the side of the danube and it is where the fascists lined up the jews and shot them and it's pretty amazing like it, it's mm. really thought provoking there's high heels there's like kind of just ran, and there's children's shoes and stuff and it's Aww. but it was kind of one of those things where i was glad to have seen it yeah and then we walked up um right up to near the yarn shop but by this point i was like oh i'm actually it's like 37 degrees Ooh. i can't cope um, so I didn't get to the yarn shop because it was a little bit off the path we were going, but we went across the ri- bridge and there's this like y shape or T-shaped bridge because there's a island in the middle of the river that's essentially a giant park. Ooh. And we got there and by this point all of us are like, we have been walking for hours, it is ridiculously hot, our feet hurt, we're yeah. covered in dust. Oh, we're just exhausted. And we were like, why is there really loud music playing? And we kind of came down the road and then there's this big fountain and it's a fountain that they play music and the fountain goes in time to the music. And the way that it's built is there's this kind of trough at the side of the of the fountain and you sit around the fountain, you put your feet in the overflow trough. Yeah. So your feet can cool off. Oh, that's clever. It was so cool. And then we went home, or well, we went back to the apartment and paid, played like your regular head and party games and just ate lots of like kind of food finger food so like salami and yeah bits of cheese Aww. and crisps and all that kind of stuff and yeah we um we got all got very drunk <laughs> and it was it's really good party. fun um I, I mean it was so much fun and then the next day was our next full day it was our last full day so um we did the hop on hop off bus tour and we went up to the palace and we rode the funicular up to the palace and the palace is amazing it's like on the hill and you can see all the way across the city it was phenomenal and then the bu- the next stop was the citadel which a lot of the medicinal springs flow out the bottom of the citadel and i mean at that point you can then see the whole city yeah. it's amazing and then we went back and got changed well, I mean, that took us the whole day yeah we went back and got changed and then we went on one of the prosecco bikes so it's like oh. this bar that it's like it's like a bar mm-hmm. like and it's got on three sides it's got on two sides it's got like benches yeah with bicycle pedals right and you sit on it and you pedal it around uh-huh. while drinking copious amounts of prosecco and it had speakers on it so you could play your music through it and we we took budapest by storm <laughs> we were on it for two hours and I mean, we had everyone smiling and laughing and cheering along. At one point, a couple of stags jumped on the back of our <laughs> jumped on the back of our prosecco bike and rode along for a bit. Um, and it was amazing. And the problem with that is it's thirty five degrees. Oh God! You get off the bike and you're suddenly like, I am extremely drunk because you've been pedaling the whole time, yeah. you've been sweating, all your water's gone, and you've all you've been doing is drinking prosecco. We did have water. Yeah. But, you know, you're drinking Prosecco, then you're drinking a bit of water, then you're drinking more Prosecco, and then, oh my goodness me, we were so drunk. <laughs> and then we went to the Ruin Bars. So we stopped in at this kind of restaurant called Mazel Tov, which is all uh-huh. Jewish stuff. Oh my goodness, it was so good. Um, and then at this point I was tired, so I went home because it was like 10 o'clock, half 10. Mm-hmm. And I do not do long nights. Um, And so I went back to the apartment um but it was amazing and eventually everyone else kind of turned up across the night um having had an amazing time and then the last day we were all flying out kind of in the afternoon evening time so we had the morning so we went to the baths and we literally spent the whole day at the baths and it was amazing and it's like thermal bath so it's got all these medicinal pools and they go right down from like 16 degrees all the way up to like 50 degrees Ooh. you know or no it's not quite 50 but like 40 degrees water but then there's like steam rooms that are about 55 degrees and there were like menthol showers and all this kind of stuff and then there were normal swimming pools outside oh nice and it was amazing i mean like uh, all the blisters all the blisters that i'd got from walking around were gone 
you know like it was just it was amazing i was like i could stay here forever and then i accidentally fell asleep in the sun and got really badly sunburned good job <laughs> which is not a very good end to the day i was like this is amazing i've gone the whole weekend without getting burned and i got to the airport and as i was yeah. ordering food i was like mm, why are my shoulders sore and i went to move them and i was like oh no so i had to spend the whole the whole trip home Aww. on the airplane like i'm so burnt but it was grand it was grand i had a really good time um sam the wonderful wonderful mm-hmm. sam turned up um he turned up at edinburgh airport for me with a big bottle of aloe vera gel oh bless him because he's wonderful and then yeah so i didn't actually get much yarn stuff but i did yeah. that that weaving shop was amazing that sounds um, good. i got some pictures said and i got yarn i got a, a project bag so mm-hmm. you know and good i stuff. got the earrings from the tatted from from the tatting shop um and then belfast we got up to a lot you did um no yarn no yarn belfast doesn't actually really seem to have yarn shops it has some shops that sell yarn as part of their stock yep but it doesn't actually have any yarn shops and the type of yarn they sell is your basic baby acrylic kind of stuff and and honestly i was just like i will never use any of this yeah so no yarn i was actually talking to my godmother and we were saying that people are someone is missing a trick if you set up in hollywood a wee yarn shop that sold you know decent quality yarn you know dyed yarn yeah you know got in some like Mm -hmm. hedgehog because hedgehog's irish you know yeah got all this kind of stuff in and had a knitting circle Mm -hmm. you know like they would make a killing yeah it's something that's really missing from from the area it just seems to be this gap in the market so i didn't actually get any yarn but the first day we were there we went we did the north coast so we went to character read rope bridge which sam did which is scary it was very windy then we did the Giant's Causeway, which Sam had never seen before, and he was quite happy clambering up and down yep. it. Then we went to Bushmills, and then we came home. The next day we went to Belfast Zoo, which is an epic zoo, mm-hmm. by the way. It's on the side of a hill, and Sam was like, Sam kept saying, your zoo has a lot of up. <laughs> but it was really funny, because the gorillas... Hang on, Edinburgh's exactly the same, that's on a hill. It's more. Oh, okay. Like, Belfast is, is properly on the side okay. of, of, a, of, like, you are going up the whole time. But then going down the other side is quite good. That's but fair. the gorillas had, like, there were these baby gorillas who kept, like, Aww. running up to the glass and trying to, like, get people on the glass. And there Aww. was the tiniest, like, it was, like, a newborn gorilla and it was so cute. And I it looked like it would have fit a small flax jumper. Smaller. Okay. It was, it was tiny. Just check. Like, it was, it was, like, a newborn kind Aww. of style. And it was so cute. And we saw the elephants yep now belfast zoo specializes in rehabilitating circus elephants oh that's cool so the elephants that they have mm-hmm. used to be like logging elephants yeah and then they were put into the circuses and like indian stuff so Aww. they were really really badly treated yeah. and i mean the elephants they have i think they're like 40 and 50 like they're old yeah. they're old and you can still see the branding on them and stuff oh. But when we got there, the two they, they kind of keep them separate, yeah. So they can they can interact with each other, but they're not in the same pen, yeah. And when we got there, they were kind of giving each other a wee hug Aww. through the fence. And Sam loves elephants; he's fascinated with elephants. Mm. So we sat and watched them for ages. And the tigers, I sat and watched the tigers for ages as well. And then what else did we do? We went down to the aquarium at Porta Ferry, but a lot of their exhibits were closed at the moment, so we didn't actually get mm. to see much. But it's a nice, it's a nice. Um, drive down strangford lock and then we had a day in belfast and we went to the titanic exhibition because i hadn't actually been yet because it opened after i left right it is amazing it's expensive but it is 100 percent worth it it's phenomenal like it goes into all the history of the shipbuilding the history of belfast the textiles the linen making the shipbuilding it's got this kind of ride in it where you sit in this thing and it mm. takes you through like bits of the shipbuilding like you can start, and it's got like heat lamps and stuff so you pure feel the heat yeah and it was just amazing like i would highly recommend it it's got re- it's got reconstructed bits of the titanic in it so like the big famous staircase and stuff you can get your picture taken um it was class 
and then we went shopping with my mum to get Aww. some stuff for my sister's wedding which is coming up nice um and that's kind of what we got up to oh i did have my favorite chippy as well because scotland's weird it doesn't do normal sausage suppers you either get battered sausages or smoked sausages both of which are yuck <laughs> What you really should have is normal link sausages stuck in the fryer and they go crispy on the outside. And and, and it was just like a taste of childhood. I was so happy. Aww. But yeah, that's what I got up to. So I had a really good time. Good. You went to a couple of places. Yes. So I, first of all, I went to Amsterdam. Ooh. It was for a work trip. So I was there for approximately 24 hours. Mm-hmm. But I did manage to successfully navigate around using the trams nice. and the underground. I was quite proud of myself because I have no sense of direction. Mm. I can't even find my hometown on a map. <laughs> <laughs> I joke. I can't find my hometown on a map. It's not that bad. And I had ti- I didn't have time to do anything, you know, cultured really. So I couldn't go to any of the museums and things. I just didn't have the time. Mm-hmm. And it was also 30 degrees and stupid high humidity the entire time. So I wasn't really for (laughs) going indoors, really. I mean, museums with aircon is one thing, but because the weather back here is usually so grim, I was kind of like, I'm going outside. I am going to soak up the culture from the streets. Yes. (laughs) And oh my God, it was such a beautiful day. The day that I actually had like sort of like five, ten minutes to run off on my own. Mm -hmm. And... I naturally went to Stephen and Penelope. Of course. And it is such a lovely, cute wee shop. It's just tucked down a little side street and they've got a bike outside and it's been crocheted around. Aww. It's like crochet bombed, I guess. Yeah. Which looks really cool. And inside, it's just this really nice, open, warm space. Mm-hmm. Everything's really like nicely like hung on the walls. And it's just a very nice, calm place to be in, which... Mm-hmm. I don't know, I guess because Stephen West is obviously one of the co-owners, you kind of expect it to be more like, bam, and yeah, excited. But no, it was just a very nice, calming shop to be in. Mm-hmm. And they had things like Madeline Tosh, obviously, Hedgehog Fibres, yeah, Garn Stories, I think, Undercover Otter. They had quite a big range of stock. And I had considered getting some of their local yarn, so I think it was the Undercover Otter was theirs. Mm-hmm. But because it was so hot I was kind of in the mood for something that had a really sort of like smooth feel to it Mm -hmm. and the bulk of the yarns there that they had that I couldn't easily get were very fluffy Mm -hmm. so they were beautifully beautifully dyed like we are talking real bright pops of colour from everywhere and some really nice fibres and in the end I settled for two skeins of Hedgehog Fibres sock Mm -hmm just because they were really nice and smooth and one's a potluck colourway and it's yellow and pink and orange and everything like 80s sunsets Mm -hmm. and things that I love. Then the other's the birthday cake colourway, which is a nice purple. And I'd wanted that one for a while and I kind of thought, you know what, I'm getting them. Yeah. And to be fair, given that Stephen West uses hedgehog fibres in so many of his designs and you didn't get to get any yarn while you were in Ireland, I figured that I've covered some nice bases there. Yeah. So yeah, it was just really nice to be in there, so that was cool. And then I left the shop and went back to um, work meetings and things. So that was cool. And I mean, the weather was nice, so it was nice getting to sit outside and drink lemonade and have an ice cream thing. Yeah. And then the place where we were having the meetings kept bringing us like free coffee. Nice. And free tea, and because it was free, we were all kind of like, let's drink all the coffee. So by the time I got to the airport at the end of the day, I was pretty much ready to vibrate through a seat. Um, <laughs> I think the security thought I was probably on something because I was just so caffeinated. Woo! <laughs> so yeah, I did Amsterdam, and then as soon as I got back, I then had a week long conference in Dundee, and no visit to Dundee would be complete without a visit to Fluff. Of course. So. It was absolutely chucking it down. I snuck out of the conference. I wasn't meant to, but I did. And I trekked all the way out in the rain to go see the lovely Leona. And again, the shop is so lovely and cute. And as soon as you walk in, you've got like Leona's counter, but on the left, you've got a great big wall of rusty ferret, Mm -hmm. which is my idea of heaven. Yep. (laughs) And I had such a nice time. Leona made me a very nice cup of tea. So I got to sit and chat and drink tea with Leona, which was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I got to meet Oscar and Arthur. <gasps> I'm so jealous. Who are we sweethearts. And they just stayed behind the counter being like, 
quite chilled out and yeah. had a wee snooze. And yeah, I had an absolutely fantastic time. I got to see where the magic happens, Ooh. which is really cool. And Leona was making um, the little stitch markers, the rusty stitch markers. I so want some. Um... So I was kind of transfixed watching, uh, like, working with the cutting program and stuff, which yeah. is really cool because I don't get to use that sort of thing. So I was mm. just like, oh my god, show me. And then I obviously came away with the skein of the Wink base, which uh, I love so much from Leona. And, oh, it's just my favourite thing. I love sparkles. I love high twist merino. And it's the burnt sugar colourway, so it's like black and pink and yellow. And apparently I'm just in this mode at the moment. Yeah. So yeah, I had an absolutely fantastic time. And it was so cool getting to see the shop and hang out and see where everything happens. And that mm. was really cool. Yeah. So if you guys are in the Dundee area, go see the owner. Go yes. to Fluff. Go buy some rusty ferret yarn. Yes. So that's pretty much my travels for the moment. I'll be going to Leeds for a conference in September. Exciting. So if I can, I'm probably going to factor in a couple of days to either visit the local yarn shops down in Wakefield, because mm -hmm. I'll be home in Wakey, or maybe see if I can get a quick visit out to Bar Ramu in Headingley or somewhere. Ooh. We will see. Yeah. Depends if you can knock off the conference <laughs> for a bit. To be fair, <laughs> what I might do is actually book the time off work as well. So yeah. I've got, it's a two day conference. So, you know, I'll actually I'll actually stay at the conference and attend that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, to be fair, this was... When I went to Dundee, I only skipped out of, like, one panel or two. You know, I, went, I stayed for the rest of the day and I went to the keynotes and, you know, a couple of days later I gave my own paper. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not a terrible conference <laughs> attendee. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, like, it wasn't anything against the panel or anything in particular, just that none of my other conference attending pals were there at the time. Yeah. And... I kind of looked at the clock and I was like, oh, it's a good time to go visit Leona, actually. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I think that is pretty much all we have for you. It seems to have turned into quite a long episode because we've yes. had quite a lot to natter on about. Indeed. Next time we'll probably have a little bit more fibery content. Absolutely. We'll <laughs> probably be back a lot sooner as well because I'm not going anywhere for August. Are you going anywhere? I'm not going anywhere in August. Okay. So, so. we'll have a little bit more kind of chance to to try to schedule this was uh certainly an event yeah um, <laughs> and i just got a text this morning being like i'm free now for like a couple of hours can we do it now yeah. i was like yes <laughs> let's the do jo it <laughs> the joys of when you're managing a phd and you're doing a thing in events management and the people you're meeting just cancel on you and also then the other <sighs> co-host has a full-time job yeah. with uh, hours that do change by the week yep. so you know good times but we're here we drank some whiskey and we went off on multiple tangents on you guys. Yes, we did. I hope you enjoyed. Yep. <laughs> and goes we'll without saying, if you're new listeners, thank you for listening and putting up with this so far. Hope mm -hmm. you enjoyed it. And to our returning listeners, hope you enjoyed the chat as usual. Yes. As ever, if you've got any suggestions for things for us to drink um, or knit with or visit, please do let us know. We're always happy to hear these things. Yeah. And um equally what i would say is like if any of our listeners know of any shops or indie dyes or anyone based around the belfast area mm -hmm. please do tell us because we want to know yeah and i'll be going back in september so if yes. i've missed something let me know when i can go yes. back in september so you can find us across many places we have a specific tipsy knits twitter account so you can follow us there yep and then on Instagram and Ravelry and things, we are... Well, I'm Ramsey Baggins across most. I'm at Miss underscore Sia Kate on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm Sia Kate on Ravelry. Yes. When I get my thesis, I'll become Dr. underscore Sia Kate. Yes. And uh, if any of you are interested in a Ravelry group, let us know, because it would be useful for being able to organize cows and things like that if yeah wants. and if we maybe try and start doing some giveaways and things as well yeah. we'd like to try and start doing that stuff so if there is interest we will do it yes so send us a wee tweet at at tipsy knits or post on instagram if you comment on instagram on like when we put up the episodes and things we usually put a post yeah. up there or just drop us a line on the blog and that's tipsy knits podcast yeah and we would absolutely love to hear from you. So thanks for sticking with us through a very tangent-involved <laughs> episode. And we shall see you again soon. Bye. Bye.